subscribe to our youtube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates we now have a whole bunch of promising vaccine candidates that have reported high efficacy and suddenly it seems like there's a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel and we're slowly approaching it in this video we're going to talk about what efficacy is how it's calculated how it's different from effectiveness and why we suddenly have so many promising vaccine candidates all at once my name is sandhya ramesh and this is pure science we know that the preliminary results of phase 3 trials have been shared with the public for a few vaccines Pfizer and BioNTech are collaborating on a vaccine that has shown 95% efficacy. This vaccine has shown promising results even among the elderly in whom typically vaccines tend to evoke weaker immune responses. Moderna's vaccine which is backed by the US government has shown a 94.5% efficacy. Russia's public sector research institute the Gamaleya Institute has announced that this Sputnik vaccine has an efficacy of 92%. Then AstraZeneca and Oxford announced that their vaccine has an efficacy of up to 90%. This is the vaccine that is being manufactured in India as well by the Serum Institute of India, the world's largest vaccine maker and it is under the name Covishield. Before we go into details about why this AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine has an efficacy of up to 90%, 70% to 90%, let's look at what efficacy actually is. The efficacy of a vaccine is a measure of the relative reduction in risk for the vaccinated arm of the trial versus the unvaccinated arm. There's a formula for this and the formula is risk in unvaccinated arm minus the risk in vaccinated arm and the whole thing divided by the risk in unvaccinated arm an ideal vaccine should have an efficacy of 1 or 100% unvaccinated risk minus zero risk divided by unvaccinated risk or if you're familiar with biostatistics 1 minus relative risk but risk here is not simply a measure of how many people got the disease in an arm over how many didn't Let's look at the maths behind this by taking the example of Pfizer's data. The Pfizer trial enrolled 43,661 participants in July, and of those, 41,135 received a subsequent second booster dose of the vaccine in November. In the trial, totally 170 people got COVID. Of these, 162 were in the unvaccinated or the placebo arm and only 8 were in the vaccine group which looks great these trials were of course randomized and controlled with a placebo now let's look at the maths let's say there are 22000 people in the vaccinated arm and 22000 people in the unvaccinated arm approximately now what percent of the 22000 people who were unvaccinated or just got the placebo contracted the disease we know that 162 people in the placebo arm did so 162 divided by 22000 is 0.74% now what percent of vaccinated candidates contracted the disease that is 8 participants over 22000 so that is 0.036% Now these two risks can be compared and that is called relative risk. The formula for that is risk for vaccinated divided by risk for unvaccinated so 0.036 divided by 0.74 which is 0.049 in percentage that's 4.9%. This means that people in the vaccine group have about 5% of the risk of developing covid that people in the unvaccinated group have one minus that is of course 95% so we say that in this trial if you take the vaccine you're 95% less likely to contract the disease than someone who didn't take the vaccine that is what efficacy means it doesn't mean that 95% of the people did not get the disease efficacy follows this complicated formula of relative risk reduction now efficacy is the number that is released after trials for vaccines but what's the difference between efficacy and effectiveness which we also talk about in similar terms the difference simply is that 
Efficacy is used in ideal settings, in trial settings and effectiveness is what happens when the vaccine is rolled out to the population or in a real world setting. There are also multiple types of efficacy. There's efficacy to prevent infection, there's efficacy to prevent disease and there's efficacy to prevent severe disease. Most vaccine trials now are checking for efficacy to prevent disease only, which is fine. So now we understand how efficacy is calculated. But what happened with AstraZeneca's efficacy? Why is it variable? Why is it 70% to up to 90%? For this, we need to look at the design of the trial. Pfizer's data was uniform globally and Moderna's is US and Russia's is Russian. But Oxford's data contains only UK and Brazil's data for now. Not really data from other places where trials are still undergoing like India, Russia, Japan and South Africa, where they're still undergoing trials for the AstraZeneca vaccine specifically. But these two subgroups, the UK group and the Brazil group are the ones that completed the trial. The Brazil group got two full doses of the vaccine, but the UK group got first a half dose and then subsequently a full dose as a booster. What Oxford and AstraZeneca discovered was that in the data from Brazil, which had about 8,895 participants, the vaccine had just about a 62% efficacy, which is not bad at all, it's very good. But in the UK group, with a half dose followed by a full dose among 2,741 participants, the vaccine efficacy was 90%. Combined analysis with a total of 11,636 participants results in an average efficacy of 70%. But the UK data is promising and we can say that this vaccine has an efficacy of up to 90%. Now the question is, if the vaccine is the same, shouldn't both subgroups, the UK group and the Brazil group, have similar efficacy? Yes, ideally they should, but this could vary due to various reasons such as prior exposure and changes in vaccine components, which could likely produce a low immune response first and then a second dose provided a stronger immune response. We can't tell yet. But why did the UK have only half a dose the first time around? Turns out it was a dosing error. What basically happened was that in the trials, AstraZeneca was noticing that after the first dose was given, the normal side effects that people experience, such as fatigue and fevers and headache and pain in the arm were really mild, much, much milder than expected. So they went back and checked Oxford's data and they found that the researchers had under predicted the dose of the vaccine by half. So people were only being given a half dose, it was an error. But what they decided to do was to continue with the half dose anyway and then administer the full dose as a booster which turned out to provide a much better efficacy than two full doses. But looking at this serendipitously that it's lucky for us is just a perspective. A dosing error during a vaccine trial is not a small deal. This will likely be investigated, it will likely have consequences and we might see quite a few stories about it over the next few days. Errors during vaccine trials cannot be neglected. Lastly, why are we having a barrage of vaccine developments suddenly? Well, the pandemic is raging out of control in these parts of the world. The steeply climbing cases in Europe and US contributed to the quick spread of disease and thus the quick conclusion of trials. As vaccinologists like to say, they are the only group of people who actually want the disease to spread so that they can keep other people safe.